think this is targeted to Thibault. Um, Thibault, if you have a chance to see the, the Q&A box, um, but here it is. Um, he was saying that we have many pasture that receive chicken litter uh, and actually quite a few that receive dairy manure. Does it make any difference when using this tool? Excellent question. Yes. So like I showed you on my MMP demonstration, MMP will calculate the soil test phosphorus levels. When you have a pasture, the so crop removal rates are very low. For example, West Virginia said zero. If it's pasture, there is zero crop removal rate. So when you harvest the hay by grazing animals, they give zero removal for phosphorus. Other states, for example, I think uh, Louisiana gives about five pounds P205 removal per ton of grazed hay. But if it's uh, if it's hay harvest, but if it's grazing, it's only one pound of P205 removed. So the pasture is very particular because when the cows grazing the pasture, about 70% of that phosphorus will be recycled when they're defecating right into the pasture. So it's a very different removal rate for hay harvest versus uh, grazing by, by cattle. Yes, so I would recommend you yeah, use this uh, projected soil test phosphorus level. So you measure the pasture uh, soil test at the beginning of the plan, and you make a plan and it will give you a projected soil test levels by the end of the plan. So if you recommend to the client to use some hay harvest, like the first cut would be hay, then you would control grazing after that, you probably come up with some reduction on the soil test process. And also there is another question that's popped in. Can the NRCS tool be used by producers to generate their own CNMPs and transitioning from the uh, NMPs? Of course they do. I see many clients, college graduated dairy farmers, they write their own CNMP for two purposes, one for regulatory purposes or for, for NRCS, for uh, equip car share. So of course we would have to check the plan out because you would have to be a certified planner. And I met quite a few clients who are certified planners on the TSP website, so they can write their CNMPs, but they have to go through a certification process. From Michael, um, that is there any state that using the manure management planner tool to lead workshops, trainings where NRCS or local conservation district uh, farm planners lead farmers to prepare their own CNMPs? Yes, typically the state agronomist, NRCS state agronomist, the contact person for MMP training. Now, if your MMP uh, training also involves Russell 2 training, you cannot divide the two because if you don't know Russell 2, you cannot use MMP. So that's why I would contact the local state uh, state agronomist and they would they have this typical training for TSP, for technical service providers and for NRCS and district employees. Very good. And then there was one more comment. Uh, I think that's specific to this part as well. Uh, Tom Thompson said that in Oregon that they have developed a planning tool called Nutrient Management Planner Tool, NMPT, that can be viewed and used online at nmpt.online. So it's good for the audience to know um, that my, this might be applied to all three speakers because um, he was saying that uh, they have some farms that are permitted operations with over 100 fields. How do these tools work with operations with a large number of fields? So I think that came in in between Andrea and Table. So either one of you want to answer that. I can jump in on the SNAP Plus side of things. <clears throat> SNAP, as I said, SNAP Plus is built for our DNR permitted CAFOs, so our larger operations as well as our smaller farms. One feature that the program has built in is the ability to build sub farms. And so when you have a sub farm, you can put your certain amount of fields within one sub farm and work from sub farm to sub farm. And when you're doing that, then you're not looking at 100 fields at a time, maybe it's 15. And that also helps when working in the mapping program as well, because you're not pushing all 100 fields information up to the internet. Um, so it is completely possible. SNAP Plus has had to make exceptions for our bigger farms because we do have farms that are thousands of acres and hundreds of fields. And we do also have a lot of strip um, uh, fields in our uh, 
in our state. And so with that, there's a lot of tiny, you know, 0.1 acre fields that add up to be hundreds of fields when planning as well. Bo, I think you already show in, in some of your examples that there are multiple fields that can be used, right? So yes. I think that, that answers that question there. So I wrote a CNMP that had 37 fields, no problem. Yeah. The first question was asking if SNAP Plus is run through NRCS's conservation desktop. My answer to that question is no, but I did provide the website link in which you can go to the SNAP Plus website and download the program or learn more about the program. That website is https uh, colon backslash backslash snapplus.wisc.edu backslash. Otherwise, typing in SNAP Plus into any browser will pull up the SNAP Plus website. The second question I received was asking, is there a difference in soil sampling requirements for cropland versus pasture in Wisconsin? Five acre grid seems high in pasture situations. Great question. Um, in this situation, there are specific rules for pasture um, soil sampling requirements. And I, sorry, I didn't specify that in my presentation, but if the pasture is not receiving mechanical applications. So if the cows are depositing their own manure or the chickens are depositing their own manure, and it's stocked at a rate of one animal unit or less, they are not required to have soil samples. If the pastures are stocked at a rate of more than one animal unit per acre, they can use an assumed soil test phosphorus level of 150 parts per million and an organic matter content of 6% if they choose to not pull samples. I will say that we've had a lot of really great conversation with pastures and grazers in the state regarding soil fertility and pasture management. And we are seeing a lot of people um, interested in pulling soil tests or pulling soil samples for their pastures. So it's been a neat, a neat conversation and a neat to see some of our grazers using our SNAP Plus software. All right, um, Amy? Yeah, so there were a couple of questions posted. Um, the first one <clears throat> was just a comment, happy to see prevailing wind direction included. That's often overlooked. And um, my comment was, yes, we agree. Um, we also want landowners to understand that prevailing wind direction changes throughout the year. So we actually offer it for kind of a um, winter, spring season and summer, fall season, just so they can understand um, which neighbors would be impacted during what time of the year. Um, the other question was, what qualifies a county as a livestock friendly county in Nebraska? And that is a good question. Um, so counties voluntarily apply to be designated as livestock friendly. Um, that application goes to the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. Uh, before the county can apply, they need to um, present their um, plan for being designated livestock friendly to the county and have um, a hearing, uh, public hearing, and and that um, that within that application that they send to the Department of Ag, they, they're basically checking boxes to say that, you know, they commit to um, complying with state regulations within the county. They desire to see agriculture um, expanded, whether that's in the form of livestock production or processing systems and so on. Um, being livestock friendly does not mean that they can't have additional uh, zoning restrictions um, or other, uh, you know, other restrictions for siting AFOs. Um, so we do have, I think about half of the uh, counties in Nebraska at this time are designated livestock friendly, but that definitely does not mean that it's easy to get a, um, approval for a livestock system in those counties. Some of them it is, others, they still have pretty rigorous um, public hearing and and sometimes deny those permits um, based on public um, opinion. So it's nice to see those signs around the state as you enter counties. Um, doesn't necessarily um, guarantee an easy process for um, establishing a new facility or expanding an existing facility in those counties. Excellent questions and answers. Uh, a lot of in-depth thoughts and details. Um, I wasn't expecting to get a questions for um, specific to Missouri, but I'll try to answer. Um, actually, I 
I've been asked a couple of times about the Missouri Clippers. Um, usually it was um, one of my colleagues, uh, soil scientist, uh, John Laurie, Dr. Laurie, who handles that part uh, between him and also Dr. Ray Massey. Um, but my understanding was that our extension website has been going through some significant changes so that it, uh, it's, it's an effort to upkeep all those previous tool. Um, so I'm, I'm sure John isn't going to let this go just like that. So he's, but he's been super busy in the last couple of years with a lot of his, uh, strip trial program. So that might be sidestepping him on that part. But if it's specific to some of the, uh, GIS files and aerial photos and topo map as such, I think Dr. Ray Massey's XI assessment tool is still working and available and you probably can use that to get some similar information. So I hope that answers some of the questions and I'll send a reminder to uh, Dr. Laurie about that, that um, misery clipper for sure. Um, Thibault? I wanted to add to this. We were in conversation with, with about Missouri Clipper. They were looking for funds and we could not provide funds for maintaining the software. So right now it's not available. The other tool was the nutrient management tracker, also offline, not cannot be used. So NRC has actually paid for my farms to develop a mineral application setback application tool, which is available right now. So if you go on myfarms.com, you will find you can make, a, make an account you can use that free service to generate these mineral application setback maps. Thank you. Great add-ons.